Okay, in this tutorial we're going to take everything that we've learned so far and create a single project. We're going to be manipulating objects using ActionScript by changing their properties, and we're also going to have a mouse event and also a timer event. So let's take a look at the structure of this finished project first before we start looking at the ActionScript code. So I have a flaw file here that has a couple of objects in the library. First one is the clock background, which is just the face of the clock. In this case, it's an orange circle. I then have another object called the second hand. Something that's interesting about when I created the second hand is that I placed the registration point at the very bottom of the second hand. That's because I want to rotate the second hand in a circle. I need to position the center point at, at the bottom since that's the axis or the actual point of, of which I want to rotate based on. If I go back to the scene, you'll see that I also have a start button, which is just a simple square that I have some text in. In my timeline, you'll see that I have an actions layer, start button layer, clock hands, and a clock background layer. So let's actually take a look at the code and start stepping through it. So if you take a look at the code, you'll see that at the very top, I'm going to create the timer for the entire clock. I'm going to have the timer run for 1,000 milliseconds for each cycle and I want the timer to run for a total number of 60 cycles. So in essence, the timer is going to run for a full minute. I then want to create an event handler for the button because I'm going to use the start button to actually kick, kick start the entire, the entire clock itself. So I create a mouse event click handler here that's going to actually start the, the callback function start timer. The next one that I have here are the events for the timer itself. If you remember in the last tutorial, we introduced the timer event and then the timer complete event. Each one is calling an individual uh, callback function, in this case, move hand and event timer. What I'm then going to do is I then have a function here called start timer, where I'm actually going to get, uh, actually use the start method of the, of the timer itself and actually get everything running. I'm going to base the start of the timer on when I click the actual start button. Let's go back to the flaw file and take a look at what I've named all the individual objects here. So in this case, the start button is called start button. And the, the actual second hand I've called second hand. So we're going to use those names in the code to be able to manipulate the different properties of these movie clips. So again, I have the start button here. And I'm accessing a new property called visible. What visible does is it turns on or turns off the display of these. But they're still part of the display stack. So in this case, I'm setting the visible, visible property of this to false, meaning that it will no longer be visible. Later, if I wanted to make this visible again, I would change it to true. If we look at the other two functions that I have here, these are the callback functions that are going to happen based on the timer events that are broadcasted. If you remember at the top here, I have two timer events, timer and timer complete. The timer event is move hand. What I'm doing now in move hand is I'm actually going to be manipulating a new, uh, new property called rotation. Rotation is going to accept a value in degrees of how much I want to rotate the object uh, uh, around, around its center point. If you remember, we set the center point to the very bottom of the object. In this case, I want to take the existing value of the rotation and I want to add 6 degrees to it. If you remember, an entire circle is 360 degrees. Since we're doing 60 seconds, or 60 cycles, and we want it to go all the way around, 360 divided by 60 is 6. I then have a trace statement that's just going to give me some visual output in the output panel that says that the, time will, the timer cycle is expired. Then at the very bottom, I have the, final, uh, I have the final callback function, which is end timer, which if I go back up to the top, you'll remember that the timer complete event is broadcasted when all the cycles have been completely broadcasted by the timer. At this point, all it's doing is outputting a message to the output console called timer finished. So let's actually take a look at what this will look like when we run it. So when I run it, nothing happens because, again, I haven't started the timer until I click the start button itself. So when I click start, it's then going to kick off the actual timer. You'll notice again that the button disappears because I'm accessing the visible property of that particular button and setting it to false. And after every cycle runs, the actual second hand is going to be going around in six degree increments all the way around the clock face. 
You'll see also in the output panel, every single second, it's output in the text, timer cycle expired, just to show me that everything's working. There, now that everything is finished, you'll see at the very bottom, timer finished. And I've no longer, I no longer see anything rotating on the clock face because I'm no longer getting events timer being broadcasted by the timer since everything's wrapped up. So this is an example of how we'd be able to use ActionScript to manipulate movie clip properties like rotation, visible, and all, as well as tie in mouse event handlers for when we want to start this by clicking on the start button, and then be able to tie in timer-based events so I can actually create changes in my application using time. So all these things are all these things that we've done here are all using the skills that you've already learned with ActionScript through these tutorials. As we continue with additional tutorials, we'll start talking about object-oriented code and how you can start beginning to create your own custom classes using best practice coding practices with ActionScript.